Welcome to a new video. Today we will discuss one of the engineering documents which is called Input Output List or I.O. List. First, why we need this document? The first thing in PLC or DCS design is to know how many input output and that will give you the size of your PLC system or the DCS system. Then the second one will be to select your input output cards and then you will design your marshalling cabinets. Who is designing the input output or who is preparing the IO list? The engineering party or EPC or the EP or the engineering party is the one who prepare the input output list. Then they will pass it to the PLC or the DCS vendor who will use it in two parts in the hardware design and also in the programming design. What document you need to prepare your I.O. list? The first one is a PNID and the data sheet. And this will give you an idea of how many input output and each type of the input output. And then you need your vendor document. And this will give you an idea about the power requirement and the power source and the form and more information about your input output. If you look at the PNID, you can define that this is FIT, this is DIT. That means I have two analog input, I have one analog output from my FIC, I have an MOV, I know that I have two DO, you can count four DIs. If you go into your data sheets, you will find the limit switches data, it will tell you what is the type of the limit switches? Is it a position transmission here? Is a 4 to 20 milliamps feedback that means another analog input from your MOV? Look at your MOV data in manual or an instruction manual for a transmitter. Your solenoid, this will give you an idea of what is the form of your input or output or your power requirement. In some of the project, they will give you an idea or a general idea about what type of I.O. you should use. So this is kind of a general, like 90%, it will be all the transmitters for 20 milliamps hard, or your analog output for 20 milliamps, or your digital input will use weighted by the PLC power supplies 24 volt, or your DOs, or it's a dry contact, or MCC and so on. So sometimes they will give you this as a guideline which you're going to use, but it doesn't mean that 900% of all your transmitter will fit into this categories, but most of them will be there. Depend on your project size, you may prepare the IO list in Excel sheet, but also you can prepare it from a database like SPI or another database. In this example, we can see here I have an Excel sheet and I have two tabs. The first one is a data, which is my input output list. And the tables, which is I'm going to use is in another tab. I start with the signal tag. The signal tag is a wire tag, is your actually each individual input or output tag. This is different than the HMI tag. So this is the tag, which is, let's say, for this MOV, I have one MOV, but I have maybe five or six or more or less DIDOs. So each one has its own unique tag. And each one of them, I have to define if it is DO, DI, AI, AO. And then you can say there is a location of it. Is it coming from the field? It comes from the field if the data comes from a marshalling room or so on. This can help you if you prepare to use a remote I.O. Now, the first part of the Excel sheet, you can see I put it as I.O. list. So what about the rest of the file? Now, the rest of the file, maybe you can add it later on. You may use it for a different purpose. Like here, I can take the form of each one of these I, I can select, is it 420 milliamps, it's two wire, four wire, is it 24 volt, is 120, 410, or is maybe I have some notes about it. 
and then I can look at the power supply. Is the power supply comes from the loop, comes from the panel, comes from the field. So you can define more about the power supply. So the first column here is the forms for 20 milliamps, two wire loop, or is it a DI, dry contact? Is it now the power supply comes from the loop, comes from the panel for 20 milliamps, or coming from the field, or 24 volt, or 48? Based on your system, how big is it? You may have one sheet which is cover a lot of stuff, but you have a small PLC system. If you have a big DCS, you will have different documents and different deliverables which can have some of those information. So let's look at here. I added the lower signal limit and the upper signal limit at the 4 to 20. And the engineering unit is a degree centigrade. And this is your lower range, 0 degree centigrade, upper range, 120. This will help the programmers to know what to do with this 4 to 20 milliamps. If it is 0 to 1, that means on off, you can add here that when it's 0, it's an alarm, which is 1, it means it is normal. That's why you can look at this group. I added comment and I added a revision here. And then in the next section, the IO assignment. I added comment and revision. That means you can have this part plus the I.O. tags, and this will be I.O. assignment document. And this, you can put the controller, you can put the base, and the card, and the channel. So let's look at the tables. So the signal would be analog input, output, digital input, output, and I added here something which is a uh, soft analog input, soft analog output. 99% you will not put the, uh, the uh, soft I.O. with the hard I.O. But just in case you think about it or you have a group of them, you want to add them, I added it here. The power could be loop power, panel, 110. If you have a flow transmitter which is need 110 from the panel or from the field, so you define it here. The engineering unit, gallon per minute, meter, inches, millimeter, water, KPA, and so on. Status 01 for the on off input and the output. So it is opened and it is open. That means open command, close command. Open, that means the status is open. Up, down, stop, start, trip, stop, trip, and so on. You can add and subtract and remove whatever you don't need from kind of list, this kind of list. The form here for your analog input could be 420 milliamps loop power, 420 milliamps, but it's a four wire and it's required 24 volt by the transmitter or by the system. So I grouped here about nine different type of analog input. Here is Output about six type of output here your digital input here your digital output I hope this will give you a good idea about the input output list Which is one of the major documents which you have to prepare when you start building your PLC or DCSS For more information about other related videos, please visit the all, all about INC playlist Thank you and please leave a comment, share and like.